I mean, come on. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited about this video because this guy is really cute and yet he is so easy to make. I can't wait to share with you how to make him. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell and then click all. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects to hit everybody's interest level it's a lot of fun it's really cool and you get introduced to things that you may or may not have even known you could crochet which is great also if you want a little bit more involvement I have a membership program with three different levels you can be a loyal supporter you can get access to my pattern vault or you can be a part of my crafters gathering where we do a Google meet and I get to see you I get to talk to you and we get to hang out twice a week every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. We get to hang out, get together, and talk about all things crochet. It's a great time. I'm thoroughly enjoying it right now. If you want the behind the scenes action, check out my Instagram. I have a lot of information there of what happens behind the scenes. Also, what projects, whips I am working on right now. If you want a little peek on what's coming up or if you want to get some information on what materials you're going to need for the upcoming tutorial you're going to find it there also so lots of fun lots of things that you can engage in and a good time we have a good time here all right so the pattern for the dino blankie doll can be located in both the description section and comment section below this video all you have to do is click on that link, purchase the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. Now, as always, you do not need to buy the pattern to make him. I'm gonna have step-by-step -step instructions on the screen walking you through how to make this particular project, the Dino Blanky doll. I just can't get enough of him. He's just too cute. All right, once you are ready to go, let's dive right into what materials you're going to need to make the Dino Blanky doll. The materials that you're going to need for your Dino Blankie doll will include a material such as a fleece or a flannel. You do not need a lot here. Really, you're just needing however much you want for the inner belly of your Dino doll. You'll need enough for both the front and the back, and you can play with any dimensions that you want. This is not set where you have to use a certain dimension. You can make this doll as small or as big as you want it to be. Preferably find a material that has dinosaur theme with it. That way it works with the dino blankie doll stuffed animal features that we are going to attach. You will also want some kind of a cutting board or cutting mat. This is a rubber mat that I'm going to be using. It's going to help protect your surface, your table surface, because we will be using a razor blade to cut little stitch holes or pocket holes into our fabric to give us that skip stitch. You will need a rotary cutter and you will need the skip cut blade. Now this skip cut blade is a 45 millimeter SKS7. So you'll see that each cut has a good spacing between each cut. And we'll use that to create the holes in the fabric or material. You'll need a crochet hook size F5 or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. I like using the smaller crochet hooks to provide the tighter stitches on my stuffed animal. If you need to utilize a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook because that's more comfortable for you, you absolutely can. And I'll tell you the modifications in the yarn when we get there. You need a yarn needle or tapestry needle to clean up all your ends, weave in all those ends at the end of the project, a pair of scissors. You'll need a measuring tape to cut your fabric to make sure it's all even. You'll need polyfill or stuffed animal stuffing for the head and the arms and the legs. 
And then last but not least, the yarn. So the yarn that I'm using is a size four weight, worsted medium, Erin 10, 12 ply or eight WPI sized yarn. The exact brand I am using is Loops and Threads Impeccable. You can utilize whatever color that you want. Try to match the color with one of the colors in your fabric. That way it's, it sinks together, it goes together, it flows well, and it makes sense. So, there's that. You'll also want a white and a black. Both These are both a size four weight worsted medium Erin 10, 12 ply, 8 WPI size yarn. This though is a Karen Simply Soft brand. So that's just what I had on hand. You could absolutely use an impeccable yarn in both white and black if you wanted. I just had some of these on hand that I'm going to utilize. Now, if you are using the size five, H5 crochet hook, you will either want to double up your yarn, so grab two strands and crochet two strands together, or you can utilize a size five weight yarn to try to make those stitches tighter. You really want to have the stitches tight so you're not seeing the polyfill or stuffing on the inside, that it all looks clean and put together well. All right, so that is what I would do as a modification if you needed to use a larger crochet hook. All right, so I'm going to have links to everything you see here in both the comment section and description section below this video. So if you need help getting your hands on anything, all you have to do is go there, click the link, and purchase the item and have it shipped directly to you. Or if you want, you can just utilize the names of everything, all the materials here in that list so that way you can go to the store and purchase whatever you need and get whatever you want, really. Personalize it to however you want it to be. Now, when it comes to this particular cutter, the Skip Cut, I could only find those online. I could, I could not find those in the store. So if you can find these in the store, that's great. I could not, I could only find those online. And I, again, I will have a link to this in the description section and comment section below. Once you have all of your materials that you need to make your Dino Blanky doll, let's just start making them, man. Let's get started. We begin with the material itself. Now you're going to take your material and how I like to do this is I will take the material and I will fold it in half. Let's take it, fold it in half. Now, if you want to, you can iron this down to make sure everything is without wrinkles and you're good, but I'm not gonna do that. So now we have at least one side that we know is joined together. And we really only have to worry about making one, maybe two cuts in the fabric for material. Now for me, I made my original Dino Blanky doll in the dimensions of six inches wide by nine inches long. So let's see how long this would be. Measure right there. So. Again, I kept roughly the same dimensions here with the nine inches long. So I'm just gonna worry about going six inches side to side and come to the bottom here. Six inches. And now I'm gonna make my cut, but I'm gonna cut both materials at the same time so I have my front and my back. If you have two materials that are not connected, like you didn't fold it over, you can put them one on top of the other, so that way the outside or the side you want facing out to people is face down on the bottom and then face up on the top. And again, you can make your Dino Blanky doll whatever dimensions that you wanna make it. Perfect. It does not have to be perfect, which is fabulous. And also, if you had the rotary cutter with the solid cut, you could have just taken it and gone zoom and made that super fast cut. Now again, you may notice that this cut it's not perfect, and that's 
fine. We're gonna cover it up with the single crochet border and you aren't gonna notice if there's any imperfections in this doll. You just won't, which is even better, right? Okay, so we have our structure exactly how we want it, just like our original or, or demo. And now we are ready. If you want to, you could trim anything before. That's totally up to you if you're a perfectionist, which I know many of you are. And that's fine. It's fine. Okay, now we will grab our skip stitch blade. Move my scissors. Make sure you have a mat or some kind of cut cutting board underneath to protect your table, trust me. Go ahead and push it forward so that it's ready to go. And we are ready to cut. Now, when we make these cuts, I like to make these cuts about a quarter of an inch away from the side. So I like to keep these cuts pretty close so that way the yarn isn't stretching too far into the fabric, but you also don't want it to be so close that the yarn is only just grabbing it and then it can pull the fabric apart. That's no good either. So let's go ahead and begin in one of the corners. And I will just gauge. Now this cutting mat that I have, I'm gonna show it off. It also has the grid on the back so I can kind of like line it up. And then follow it. You will push firmly, move slowly. There we go. So there's one side and you'll see if you pull, you'll see that hole that it just cut, pull the hole it just cut. There we go, there's our little holes. Then we'll rotate, line it up, fourth of an inch in and go. Now I like to square mine off if you're somebody who wants the more rounded edge look, then you absolutely can go. And when you get close to the edge, just round it and keep going. That's cool. This is your dino doll. Great. All right, so now I have cut all of my holes. You wanna make sure that your sides stay fairly put together. Even if I were to separate this out and need to line them back up, the holes should align with a one-to-one -one ratio all the way across on all sides. All right, and now that we have cut our fabric, we've cut the holes, the skip stitches in our fabric, we are now ready to do the crochet part and make the crochet border around the whole thing. All right, let's begin with the single crochet border around our fabric material. So starting with the yarn that we wanna use for the main body, begin with a tail long enough for us to weave in our end at the end of the project, create our slip knot, and attach our crochet hook. Perfect. All right, so begin in one of the corners. It really doesn't matter where you begin. So I'm gonna choose this side and this corner to start. So grab that corner and then kind of pull the fabric material to find the first hole. There's the first hole for me. So take your crochet hook and poke it through the hole. Now you may feel a little resistance at first. These holes are fresh. And so you may need to put a little bit of force in your crochet hook to get it through that first hole and then slip stitch. So yarn over, pull through and through the loop on your crochet hook for a slip stitch and then chain one. We will begin by making a single crochet stitch in that same first hole that we just slip stitched into. So single crochet. 
and be gentle with the fabric. Try to make sure you're not pulling too hard that it separates the fibers. Next, we're going to chain one and find the next hole. So finding the next hole, we're separating the yarn. Oh, there's my next hole. And single crochet. There we go. And then chain one, find the next hole. There you are, it's hidden. There we go. And single crochet. And that is what we're doing along the first side is chain one, single crochet in the next hole chain one, single crochet in the next hole. Now be patient with this step. Try to find those holes. And get through the first round of the blanket border or this border and then things move a lot faster. So just try to be patient here and it'll pay off as soon as we are done with round one. Okay, let's go ahead and at least repeat this chain one, single crochet in the next skip stitch space or hole all the way along this side. And then I'll show you how we get around the corners. All right, so I'm getting to the very end of this first row or this first side here. And I wanted to show you something. So as I'm going along, I noticed that my stitches looked better if I used a an elongated single crochet stitch opposed to just making a single crochet stitch. See how these stitches look better than these ones? And here's what I'm doing different chain one, find my next stitch space. I am inserting my crochet hook. Come on, there we go. Yarning over, pulling through the material, and then I keep pulling until my crochet hook has reached the edge of the material. And then I yarn over and pull through for that single crochet stitch. And that made it look a lot cleaner opposed to these regular single crochet stitches. So for me personally, because I am a perfectionist, I might go back and it's actually not so bad if you remove your stitches, you can easily do that and then return back to where you were. And I might elongate these first stitches to keep these all looking the same and just looking a lot better. But for you, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to work this corner for you. So we just worked the very last stitch space or that very last hole along this side. I'm going to chain one, crochet or single crochet in that same hole. Oh, why'd I yarn over? Single crochet in that same hole, and then chain one and single crochet a third time in that same hole. So a total of three single crochet stitches with a chain one in between each stitch. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, then chain one to work this side of the work. And then you just repeat what we did. Chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet chain one, single crochet. Remember that the elongated single crochet stitch where you find the next hole right here. Yarn over, pull through, and let's clean that up. There we go. And then you keep pulling until your crochet hook has reached the edge of the material and then you pull, yarn over and pull through for that elongated single crochet. Next hole. There you are. 
pull through and pull. And then yarn over, pull through. And that's what I'm doing. So go ahead and repeat this corner with corner number two and corner number three. I will meet you at corner number four to show you how that one is different. But remember for each, for each corner, it's going to be a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So three total single crochet stitches in the corner hole, okay? Go ahead and continue on. I'll meet you in corner number four to show you how corner number four is different, how we close corner number four and what we do next. All right, almost to the end here. And actually, I think I've reached the end. So in that very first little hole right here, I'm going to make two single crochet chain ones. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet in that same hole chain one and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch to close round one of our border. Now this is what you should be roughly looking at right now. This single crochet border that we have going around our fabric material. The, the elongated single crochet did seem to flatter best and if you have any loose little strings that came out while you were poking your crochet hook through these hole spaces, you can go ahead and take those and just kind of get rid of them. They, they'll eventually go away. All right, so for round two of our border, we're going to chain one and single crochet in the back loop only of every single stitch and chain all the way around. Now, when it comes to the corners, we're going to do a, or when it comes to the corners, we're going to make three single crochet back loops only in that second single crochet stitch of the three. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and make our way along this side to the first corner. And then I'll show you how we work the first corner. And then I think you got it all the way around. So single crochet back loop only finding that first stitch finding the v taking our crochet hook inserting it into the middle of the v only going into the back loop of that v yarn over pull through and single crochet next v back loop only there we go and continue making one single crochet back loop only in each stitch all the way around. Now, if it helps you, go ahead and count the number of stitches that you have along each side. That way you know how many stitches you need to make. And because I made this pattern open to you making your own modifications on the side, uh, go ahead and count the number of stitches that you have. Great, we've just made it to the corner, three single crochet chain ones. This is what our pattern is looking like so far, if you need a little reference. Great, okay, so first single crochet stitch, just making a single crochet back loop only. First chain, single crochet back loop only. Now with that second crochet stitch, on the top of that second single crochet stitch, I'm gonna make three single crochet back loop only. So one, two, three in the same stitch space. And that helps me to rotate to the next side. And then I just continue making one single crochet back loop only in each stitch and in each chain all the way across. Now go ahead and repeat this 
what we just did for corner number one, you're gonna repeat in corner number two and in corner number three. Corner number four is gonna be a little bit different, so I'll meet you in corner number four to show you how we work that. And this is the last round for the border for the body, and then we start working on the arms and the legs. So go ahead and continue on, and I'll meet you in corner number four to show you how we close this off. Perfect, corner number four of round two. I just made it to the corner three single crochet chain ones. So in that first single crochet, I'm going to make a single crochet back loop only. Next will be a chain, so single crochet back loop only. And in that second single crochet stitch, I'm gonna make three single crochet back loop only on top of that one stitch space and that will help me to turn. And now I will slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch to close round two. Perfect. And this is what we're looking at. This is the body. Perfect, see how it's not perfect and we see that, we know that, but whoever is receiving it doesn't get it. They're like, that's supposed to be like that, cool. So then we go ahead and we cut a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Yarn over that tail, pull it through the loop on our crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off, and we are done with the main body and ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be the arms and the legs. So let's go ahead and put this off to the side. Now the arms and the legs are done the exact same way. So I'm going to show you one demonstration and then you just repeat it three more times, total of four for two arms, two legs. All right, so for the arms and legs, we are going to be working in continuous rounds. What that means is we are not going to be slip stitching and chaining one to get to the next round. We're just gonna dive right into the next round. So if it does help you out to use or utilize stitch markers in this space, you absolutely can, that's optional. I'm gonna use my tail as my round marker though. So I will begin with a longer tail to, to start my project. Now, because we are working in rounds, you can begin with either the magic ring or you can begin with the chain two method. I'm gonna utilize the chain two method in this particular example. So I'm gonna give myself about a five inch long tail and then create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook. And for me, I'm doing the chain two method. So one, two, perfect. All right, so for round one, you will either make six single crochets inside your magic ring or six single crochets inside the first chain of the chain two. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and Six, perfect. Now, if you're utilizing a row marker, I would put that row marker in the top of that sixth single crochet stitch right here, and then we will move on. Now for me, I'm gonna utilize my tail as my row marker. So I'm gonna yarn over my tail and pull the tail through the loop on my crochet hook, and that will indicate to me that I just finished round one and I'm ready to move on to round two. Now for round two, we will increase single crochet in each stitch all the way around. All that means is making two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. You will end round two with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Perfect. All right, go ahead and move that row marker if you are using one and place it into that 12th single crochet stitch right there. For me, I'm going to grab my row marker tail 
yarn that over, pull it through the loop on my crochet hook, and that tells me I've just closed round two. Now for round three through round 15, all you are doing is making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end each round with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. All right, go ahead and continue, and I will meet you at the end of round 15 to show you what we do next. Last stitch of round 15, perfect. Okay, I'm going to yarn over my row marker tail because I have one. If you do not have a row marker tail, you are utilizing stitch markers. What I want you to do is I want you to slip stitch, even if you did use this row marker, I want you to slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch or very next single crochet stitch. So slip stitch and that just kind of helps to smoothly transition this line so it's not a jarring stop and then dip. Take your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to sew this appendage, arm or leg, whatever it's going to be, onto your stuffed animal blankie. And then we will take that long tail we just cut, yarn that over, pull it through the loop on our crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off, and there is one. We need a total of four, so go ahead, take a second, make three more, and then we can move on to the head. Great, now that we have two arms and two legs created, we can put those off to the side, and now we will begin working on the head. So again, we are going to work in rounds, continuous rounds. So you can either begin with the chain two method or the magic ring. And also you can utilize a stitch marker, row marker, if you would like. I am going to use my tail as my row marker again. So starting with, I'm going to use about a six, seven inch long tail because the head is a little bit more round, it's bigger. So I'm going to start with about that, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook and ready to go. All right, so for for me, I'm going to start with the chain two method. One, two, and then for round one, you will make six single crochet stitches inside the magic ring or six single crochet stitches inside the first chain of your chain two. One, two, three, four, five, six, great. Okay, so go ahead and put your row marker, stitch marker in the sixth stitch right there. I'm gonna take my tail, yarn over the tail and pull the tail through the loop on my crochet hook to indicate to me that I've just finished round one. For round two, we will make an increase single crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way around. That just means you're going to be making two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. You should end round two with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Great. Move that row marker to the twelfth stitch right there. I'm going to take my row marker tail, yarn over, and pull through the loop on my crochet hook. And now we are ready for round three. For round three, we will increase single crochet in the first stitch and then make one single crochet in the next stitch. And then repeat that pattern. Two single crochet, one. Two single crochet, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round three, ending round three with a total of 18 single crochet stitches. Here we go. So one, two, in that first st stitch space, and then one. Next stitch space, one, two, and then one. One, two, one. Six, 
16, 17, 18. Great. Move that row marker to the 18th stitch. I'm going to yarn over my marker tail and pull that through the loop on my crochet hook, indicating to me I've just finished round three. Perfect. Okay, so for round four, the repeat pattern will be increase single crochet in the first stitch and then make one single crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. So increase single crochet, one, one. Increase single crochet, one, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round four, ending round four with a total of 24 single crochet stitches. Make sure your stitches are on the tighter end. That way we can eliminate any holes that show up when we stuff this particular head portion. We don't want any polyfill white stuffing poking through the holes. So we got one, two, and then one, one. One, two, one, 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 two, one, one, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. Great. Move your row marker. I'm going to yarn over my tail. Perfect. We are now ready for round five. The repeat pattern for round five is increase single crochet in the first stitch space and then make one single crochet stitch in the next three stitch spaces and then repeat. Two single crochet, one, one, one. Two single crochet, one, one, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round five, ending round five with a total of 30 single crochet stitches. Here we go. One, two, one, one, one. Perfect, ending round five right here. We are now ready for round six. For round six, the repeat pattern will be increase single crochet in the first stitch space right here, and then make one single crochet stitch in the next four stitch spaces, and then repeat. Two single crochet, one, 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 one. Two single crochet, one, 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 one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round six, ending round six with a total of 36 single crochet stitches. So first stitch space, we got one and two, and then we will do one and two and three and four. Increase single crochet, one, two, and then one and two and three and four. 33, 34, 35, and 36. Great, moving your row marker. Awesome. All right, so for round seven through round 12, the end of round 12, you will just make one single crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way around. You should end each round, round seven through round 12, should each have a total of 36 single crochet stitches in them. So go ahead and work through these rounds, and I will meet you at the end of round 12 to show you what we do next. You are doing such a great job. Keep up the great work. All right, just finishing up round 12. Here we go. I'm gonna move my row marker. Perfect, we are now ready for round 13. Now for round 13, we are going to start decreasing or closing in the spherical shape of our head. So we, we do this by doing a decrease single crochet stitch in the first two stitch spaces, and then making one single crochet stitch in the next four stitch spaces, and then repeating. Let me show you what this will look like. So in that first single crochet stitch, we will insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. Then in the next single crochet space, 
we will insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. So now we have three loops on our crochet hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops and that turns two stitch spaces into one. And then we will make one single crochet stitch in the next four stitch spaces. So one, two, three, four. Then decrease single crochet. And then one, two, three, four. Let's do that one more time. Decrease single crochet. Oop. And then one, two, three, four. You will repeat this pattern all the way around for round 13, ending round 13, with a total of 30 stitches. Twenty-nine and 30. Perfect. Move your row marker. We are now on round 14. For round 14, we will decrease single crochet the first two stitches together and then make one single crochet stitch in the next three stitch spaces and then repeat. Decrease single crochet, one single crochet in the next three stitch spaces. You will repeat this pattern all the way around for round 14 ending round 14 with a total of 24 stitches. So here we go. First stitch space, second stitch space, three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And then one, two, three. And then decrease single crochet. And then one, Two, three. 22, 23, and 24. Great, move that row marker. We are now on to round 15, and round 15 is the last round for our head. Yay! All right, so for round 15, we begin with a decrease single crochet stitch and then making one single crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. And then repeat, decrease single crochet, one, one. Decrease single crochet, one, one. You, you will repeat this pattern all the way around for round 15, ending round 15 with a total of 18 stitches. You're so close. One, two, decrease single crochet, one and two. Decrease single crochet, one and two. 16, 17, 18. Great, move that row marker. Slip stitch into the very first stitch space of what would be round 16. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to so attach the head to the body. Yarn over that long tail, pull that tail through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off. Great. Next, we are going to make the nose for this dino blinky doll. Here we go. So I'm going to use the same color, though you could deviate if you wanted to and make or use a different color. All right, so we are going to be making the nose in rounds, but it's going to be different. It's gonna be an oval opposed to a circle. So I'm gonna take my yarn, and I don't necessarily need a row marker or a round marker. If you would like to utilize one, you can absolutely do so, but we're only making three rounds here. So I'm gonna start with a shorter tail, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook. Great, we begin by chaining five chains. 
One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. For round one, we will make a single crochet stitch in the second chain from our crochet hook. So not including the loop that's on our hook, look at your V-stitches. We got one V, two V, single crochet in that second V-stitch. Then make two more single crochet stitches and then one single crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. So we got one and two, leaving one chain or one stitch space left over. And that last chain, we will make three single crochet stitches. One, two, and three. Great. That actually helps rotate us to start working on the other side of the chain. Or I'm going to just take this tail and drop it behind and work over it and ignore it. All right, so make one single crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. One, two, and in that last, last stitch space, I'm gonna make two single crochet stitches. One, two, and then slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet stitch to close round one. Perfect. All right, so for round two, we will chain one. We will make one single crochet stitch in the next four stitch spaces. So starting with the stitch space we just slip stitched into. One, two, three, four. In the next stitch space, we will make three single crochet stitches. One, two, three, single crochet in the next five stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And in the last stitch space here, make three single crochet stitches. One, two, three. Perfect, slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet stitch to close round two. Now for round three, this is the last round, we are going to chain one. We will make one single crochet stitch in the first five stitch spaces. So beginning in the same stitch space we just slip stitched into. One, two, three, four, five. In the next stitch space, make three single crochet stitches. One, two, three. Single crochet in the next seven stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next stitch space, make three single crochet stitches. One, two, three, and then make one single crochet stitch in the last two stitch spaces. One and two, perfect. Slip, slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch. That closes round three. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to sew, attach the nose to the face or the head portion. Yarn over that really long tail, pull that tail through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off. Perfect. And then I put my fingers inside and kind of form it and that is going to be our little nose. Great. The next thing we're going to make is the outer eye. So I'm going to take the white color. I like to pull from the inside. Perfect. All right, so we will be working in continuous rounds, circles. So I like to utilize my tail as my row marker. If you would like to use a stitch marker, you can. I'm going to start with about three inches, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, and here we go, beginning the outer eye. So we, you can either begin with the magic ring or the chain two method. I'm utilizing the chain two method. So one, two, 
For round one, you will make eight single crochet stitches inside the first chain or eight single crochet stitches inside your magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Put your stitch marker, row marker in that eighth stitch. I'm going to yarn over my tail, pull that through the loop on my crochet hook to indicate to me that I finished round one. For round two, all you're doing is making an increased single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. All that means is making two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. You should end round two with a total of 16 single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, 15, 16, great, move that row marker, row marker tail. I'm gonna have you slip stitch into the first stitch space to round off, just clean up that circle. Cut a long enough tail for you to sew, attach the eye to the stuffed animal. Yarn over, pull through. And that is outer eye number one. We need to make one more. Let's do that real quick. Perfect. Okay, so we just finished both eyes right there. Next, we will work on the inner eye. The inner eye barely takes any yarn at all, so this is great for scrap yarn. So to make the inner eye, I'm utilizing the black color. Again, we are working in rounds. I'm going to start with a smaller tail, creating slip knot, attach crochet hook. Again, working in rounds, so you can either begin with the magic ring or the chain two method. I'm using the chain two method. And all you're doing for this particular inner eye, round one, is making eight single crochet stitches in the first chain or eight single crochet stitches inside your magic ring. And that is all you do for the inner eye. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Moving my row marker tail. If you don't have a row marker tail, then you don't have to worry about that. Slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch. Grab your scissors. Cut a tail long enough for you to sew this inner eye to the outer eye. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off. And that is your inner eye. Make one more of those. Awesome. Okay, so our two eyes are done. The last thing that we are making here are the plates on top of his head. So we are going to be making these guys right here, these details on the top of his head. So we will be utilizing the color that we used for the rest of the body. If you want to deviate, you absolutely can by choosing a different color. We will be working in rounds again. So starting with a longer tail, I'm going to utilize my tail as my round marker. And slip knot, attach my crochet hook. Now you can begin with the magic ring or the chain two method. I'm sticking to the chain two method. For round one, we will make four single crochet stitches inside your magic ring or four single crochet stitches in your very first uh, chain right here. So one, two, three, four. Perfect. Move that 
row marker right there, stitch marker, or place one in that fourth single crochet stitch. Now for round two, we will be making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. We will end round two with a total of four stitches. However, this is going to be a little, little difficult, a little tricky because it's gonna get tight. We are making the point of our triangle, triangular shape right here, our cone shape. So first single crochet stitch, one single crochet, next stitch, two. You kind of want to push it forward and start working on top almost. And then three and four, perfect. So what you have here is a little nub looking thing and that is going to be our point. Go ahead and move your row marker. For round three, you're going to increase single crochet in the first stitch space and then make one single crochet stitch in the next three stitch spaces. You will end row or round three with a total of five stitches. So in the very first stitch space, we've got one, two in that same stitch space and then we've got one and two and three right there all right move that stitch marker we are now on round four. For round four, we will increase single crochet in the first stitch space and then make one single crochet stitch in the next four stitch spaces. We will end round four with a total of six stitches. One, two, and then one, and two, and three, and Four, perfect, move that row marker. Last round for this plate on top of, for on top of the head is round five. So for round five, we will increase single crochet in the first stitch space and then make one single crochet stitch in the next five stitch spaces. You will end with a total of seven stitches for round five. One, two, and then one and two and three and four and five. Perfect, we are done. Go ahead and move that row marker. Slip stitch into the very first stitch of what would be round six. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to sew, attach, this plate to the top of the head. Yarn that long tail over, pull it through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off. And this is what we are looking at. When you lay it down and squish it down and mold it a little bit, you get that perfect triangular shape. It is a little difficult, I guess, to maneuver the stitches because everything is so tight. But if you can, instead of working along the edges, start to mold it where you are working upward, it makes it a little bit easier. And then you have that point that we want right here. All right, so we have one. I made a total of three. One, two, three. But you can make as many as you want. You can make more, you can make less, and really just have fun with this. So go ahead, take a second and make as many of these plates as you want. And I will meet you after that to do the last step, which is assembling all the pieces together. All right, we are ready to assemble all of our pieces together. The first thing I like to do is take my polyfill and fill the arms, legs, and head just to make sure that all that is out of the way and then I can zoom along sewing all the pieces to the main body. Now when I am filling my pieces, you don't want to overstuff, causing the stitches to separate and you see the white polyfill or white stuffed animal stuffing on the inside. 
You want it to be a little squishy. You want it to be a little cuddly, opposed to very firm. And yeah, I think I, I wanna be able to squish it. I wanna be able to squeeze it. All right, so go ahead, take a second, fill your arms, your legs, and your head. And then I think we will be ready to attach those to your body portion. Great, just filled the arms, legs, and head. I did want to mention that the head, we will be sewing lengthwise. We're not going to be sewing the head like a circle. We're going to be squeezing the head lengthwise and sewing and attaching the head this way. And that may affect how you fill the head. We kind of want the head to be a little more flat this way. Okay, so that way those can sew up together and attach to this border. So when you fill him, don't try to overfill the head. Let him fill and then squish it flat ways. Perfect, okay, great. When it comes to assembling all of our pieces, grab your yarn needle or tapestry needle, and then you can either utilize the diagram that I have included on the chart. I will include a picture of the diagram here on the side if you would like to know how many stitches from each side I counted and then attached a piece or where I attached the arm or where I attached the legs. You can utilize my diagram or you can totally do your own thing and place your pieces wherever you wanna place them. Maybe you want to make your dinosaur, dino blankie doll, go like this and then have your four legs poking out the bottom. Have fun with this, this is yours. You can do whatever you want with him. All right, be creative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the head. I'm gonna go ahead and thread that through. And before I even begin, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this flat. That way I'm not having to fumble with this when I'm attaching it to the actual body. So I will take this and go stitch to stitch and then over, stitch, stitch. And it doesn't have to be perfect, so do not worry about perfection here. Great, okay, so then we take the head to the body and we will count seven stitches inward. So looking at your three stitches from your corner, so one, two, three, and then count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In that eighth stitch, I'm going to insert my yarn needle. All right, and then I'm gonna come around into the main body, and then down next stitch, and then through the head, and next stitch. And that is how I'm going to attach the head to the body. Now, if you have enough yarn left over for attaching. Once you go one direction, I would double back just to strengthen the hold of the attachment. All right, so making sure that we have symmetry here with the head, we count, so here's the three one, two, three, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect, okay, over on this side, we got the three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, perfect. So our head is perfectly centered. Now when we add the arms, we will add the arms 
on the side. If you wanna do the exact way I am doing, you can. If you wanna deviate, you can. But I have attached my arms seven stitches down from the top. So counting your three in the corner, one, two, three, and then we start. So there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I will attach here at the seventh. Before I attach, I want to sew this flat, slow the, sew the opening flat so it's easier to attach to the body. Perfect. Great. Before you attach the arm, find the side of the arm where the tail is showing or where the join shows. You get to choose. Do you want to have the join showing on the front or do you want to hide that and move it to the back? I think it looks best if you move it to the back. That way you have your best face forward. All right, so counting again, one, two, three of the corner, and then six down. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the seventh stitch, insert your crochet hook, insert your yarn needle, and then from the back to the front. Let's go even more, there we go. Perfect. Next one down, front to the back, and come to the arm, the back, to the front. And just attach all the way down. Okay, great. I finished attaching my arm one direction and then I doubled back to give the arm attachment extra strength because children are usually very playful with their toys and so the stronger your hold the better. To tie off I will take my yarn needle insert it into one of the stitches here there we go let it go all the way through but hold back some of the yarn before it too goes through. Okay, I'm gonna re-thread this. This is gonna be close. I really cut this one close, which is totally fine. I'd rather that than waste a bunch of yarn. There we go. Okay, so for the yarn that I held back right here, I'm gonna take this loop and I'm gonna twist it so it forms this X shape. Then I'm gonna take my yarn needle, I'm gonna go underneath and through that loop, and then I'm going to pull tight for a slip knot. And there we go. Perfect, then take your yarn needle, insert back into the work, go amongst the polyfill so the fibers cling to each other, Pull through and cut off the excess yarn. Perfect, go ahead, take a second and attach arm number two and I'll meet up with you to attach the legs. Great, we are now ready to attach the legs. So I already sewed the tops of them so they are ready to go. Looking for the join, I want the join to be facing the back. There's the join, join facing the back. Now, where I placed the legs, I placed the legs four st stitches inward from the sides. So, I'm gonna take this one. Find the three of the corner. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. And the fifth stitch is where I'm gonna join. So into the fifth stitch, through, and then I'm going to come through and across, boom,
And if you have enough yarn left over, double back. Great, and then tie off. Twisting to make that X shape, go underneath. Perfect, and then thread that needle through. Boom. So there's one. And then for leg number two, we will also symmetrically attach leg number two, four stitches in. So looking for the corner three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, fifth stitch right there. But I want my leg to be facing this direction. So I'm just going to attach where it lines up. Now again, if you want to, you can use your stitch markers to attach the leg or safety mm -hmm. pins or uh, however, whatever technique you wanna utilize to attach the appendages where you want them to stay before you sew them onto the body. That can work great as well for you. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and perfect. And I'm gonna double back. There we go, and tie off. Twisting. Perfect, great. Okay, so now that we have finished attaching the head, the arms, and the legs, the next things we are going to start working on are the details, really. I'm going to begin with the eyes. So actually I'm gonna move him out of the way so I can focus on the eyes here. Here we go. Grab your white yarn. Cut off, I mean, this is all kind of a range, but I'd say that is about 11 inches. You don't really need that much, but it's good to have too much than not enough in this particular instance. We just want the black inner eye here. We are going to make this V shape of the inner eye and that really adds a lot of detail. So I'm gonna to come to the eye. I want the tails to be facing this direction here. I'm going to look at my stitches. So I have like a 12 o'clock, 11, 10, and then nine, if, if you, that's how you can kind of judge. But you got, you got straight up and down, that's a stitch right there. The stitch right next to it, I'm gonna come in from the back to the front, leave a small tail so I can tie that off, and then insert my yarn needle right in the center, right there, perfect. And then in the next stitch over, I'm gonna come from the back to the front. Great. And then take my yarn needle, stick it right in the center. And it makes a little V shape. And that's what I want. I want that V shape. And then we're done there. Grab your scissors, cut that off and tie a knot. I'll tie two knots. So one and two. Perfect. And then you can cut the excess tails and leave those real short, just like that. Okay, so there's one. Let's do that again over here. So taking your circle, take the tails, have them go to the side like that. Grab your white, have 
one stitch be straight up go to the next stitch over go from the back to the front and then in the middle okay next stitch over back to the front and then in the middle makes that v-shape tie two knots one two cut off your excess slack you do not need it there we go perfect okay so the inner eye is done now we are going to attach the inner eye to the outer eye okay so thread the longest tail through your yarn needle and you can actually cut this tail fairly short too. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck it behind, tuck all of those tails behind, and I'm gonna sew them to the inner eye, or to the outer eye right here. So I take my eye and I favor one side of the outer eye. I don't go dead in the middle. You can go dead in the middle if you want to, but I will usually keep the black like touching the outer side on one of the eyes or the inner, the outer eye, and then I sew to attach. Again, this is another thing that you can personalize, deviate, modify however you want. And then I just go along the outer stitches I do not do the middle, I just do the outer of the black. To attach the inner eye to the outer eye. And there we go, perfect. Kind of mold it to a circular shape if it's not a perfect circle right off the bat. And now that is done. I then take the black tail and the smaller white tail, because I used my tail as a row marker. If you don't have that second tail, that's totally fine. Just you would tuck this tail in the back and then we cut those short those so short okay outer eye one is done now let's do the other one cut this small tail shorter tuck it behind Grab that And I will generally have both eyes going the same direction. That way they don't look cross-eyed. And I try to match up the Vs so it looks like the reflection of the eye is the same. And so it, it makes sense. Cut off the excess. Awesome, okay, so the two eyes are now ready to be attached to your stuffed animal. Gauge how you want them, how close you want them to be, how far apart you want them to be. There's no set answer here. Tuck the tails in the back. Make sure you have enough room for the nose. So you don't want these eyes to be way down here and have nowhere to put your nose. Okay, and we will be overlapping the nose over the bottom part of the eye. It's really cute, you'll see. Okay, so eye number one, I'm gonna go into the work. And I just want to pick up the white. Then in 
into the work and then out the white into the work out the white there you go into the work go insert okay eye number one is done now let's attach eye number two Great. All right, so the next step that we have is attaching the nose. Now with the nose, we're gonna place the nose over the eyes just a little bit, and it gives the whole face depth, which is super cool. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and feed this. Start by placing the nose. I'm actually gonna place it this way so I have that tail out of the way. I'm gonna take that tail and tuck it in the center. What I want you to do is place the nose just over the eyes where you're covering up just the smallest bottom portion of the eye. You're going to take your yarn needle and sew half of the nose up, and then take your polyfill, just the smallest little bit of stuffing, and tuck it inside to give the nose a little bit of shape. So go ahead and make your way halfway around, and then I'll meet you so we can stuff the nose and then finish the nose. Great, now that I've gone about, gosh, I'd say three quarters of the way, I have a little opening right here, sticking my finger in to give it some kind of structure. I don't want it too wide, too big, just enough to stick my finger in. So I'm gonna take this polyfill. And again, you don't wanna overstuff this, you're just giving it some kind of shape. So I might not even use all that little bit. There we go, okay. and finish attaching. Again, I'm gonna want some of this nose to overlap the eye. There we go. Kind of smooth it out. I can actually take that little bit. Get that in there. Kind of follow it down. Great. Once you've reached the end here, do a final check to make sure you didn't miss any stitch joins because that would create a big hole and be a big eyesore. I think I'm good. I think my stuffing is good. The structure of it all, I like it. 
All right, so on the bottom here, going to tie off. Perfect. Next, we will do the nostrils. So you can take some of your scraps of the black. You can just utilize the smallest, like every little bit, not wasting anything. Okay, so when it comes to the nostrils, I like to attach the nostrils or sew the nostrils in the second round. So here is the middle or the first round, second round. And I like to go in between the blacks of the eyes. So lining up the black here, go in. And I'll go, so that's one. So one yarn. Two yarns here and three. Perfect. I think th for me personally, three is just enough to really bold the nostril or the line. And then I will come actually back in because I don't want it to poke out. So I'm going to go back in that same stitch I just came out of. Line up right there. I'm going to go down. So one yarn, two yarns, oh. and then I'm going to go in for three because that would go down for three, but I'm going to poke my needle out where I started. So I've got two little tails. I'm going to tie a knot in the two little tails to secure them. One and two. Now, if you wanted to, you could have used one scrap for one nostril, one scrap for the other nostril. Grab your crochet hook. Insert into the work. Come out where those two tails are. Grab those two tails and just pull them into the work. Ta da! Kind of shape and mold and shape and mold. And there, now you have your two nostrils. If you don't like them, you can cut them out and replace them. They work for me though. That's cute. Okay, and the last thing we have are the three plates that we're going to place on top of his head here. So I like to keep them flat. I tuck the, the small tails on the inside, but I do not fill these. The only thing I place inside are those smaller tails. There we go. Great, so I take, I start with one and I'll place it over the middle top, keeping it flat, and then I just attach. Great. So there's one and I actually might go a little over to have that corner lay more flush against the head. There we go. And then tie that off. Got this floppy body that I keep moving to cooperate. Okay, tie off, there we go, so there's one. Number two, now for me, I'm going to line them up 
one on this side and one on this side, but you can place your plates however you want. Maybe you want them to go sideways this way and do kind of like a mohawk look. That would be really cool too. Again, make this your own. Maybe you make a whole bunch and the back of his head is super bumpy. <laughs> There's The ideas are endless. I really do hope you have fun with him. Here we go. My whole idea or thought process here is that I give you some options and you take those options and you do whatever you want with those options. Or you can just follow along with me. That's cool too. And I think with this one, I have so much yarn left over. I'm going to double back. And then tie off. Great. And last one, guys, and then we're done. Perfect. Awesome. Tie this off. Last one. Oh, there we go through. Yay! We are done, guys. The only thing you have left to possibly do is weave in these two ends right here, and he is done. Oh my goodness. Isn't he cute? Oh, I hope you had so much fun making him and that he inspires you to make a whole bunch more. And then he can just there's so much you can do and prop him up or <laughs> even <laughs> he's just cute <laughs> all right guys i hope you had a lot of fun making him i hope you make a bunch yeah he's super cute All right, so what did you think of the Dino Blankie doll? If you had any questions at all, feel free to ask me in the comment section below, or you can get a hold of me through any of my contact information that you can find in both the description section and comment section below this video. I would love to help. If you do see a question below, and I haven't answered it yet, but you know the answer, I am totally open to all of us helping each other out and really being a part of this beautiful community that I so appreciate and love, where we all lift each other up and help each other to have the best crochet experience possible and then when I see the question I will respond and say yep that's exactly how I would have answered it or I'll say I have another way this is another way that you could have done it and so or answer the question <laughs> I hope you had so much fun making this project. If you had a good time, you might also enjoy these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I do always cherish crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>